Hello, welcome to another edition of Aquarium Ed Talks. My name is Katie and I'm an educator here at the North Carolina Aquarium on Roanoke Island. And today I'm here to talk to you about amphibian adaptations. Well, amphibians are a class of animals that include frogs, salamanders, toads, and something called a Sicilian. And these animals have quite a few things in common, but we're gonna focus on a few very important adaptations that these animals have that help them survive in their environment. One adaptation that a frog has is that it can jump really far. If you look at this skeleton of a frog, you can see it has really long leg bone. Some frogs can jump over 40 times the length of their own body. So that would be almost like a six foot person being able to jump the length of a football field in one jump. So it's a really neat adaptation frogs can use to get away from predators. If you look at this image of a tree frog, this green tree frog is known for climbing trees. You might see them on the outside of your house or on a sliding glass door. They have specially adapted fingertips. So their little fingers or toes, they are sticky, almost like Spider-Man, and they can climb up things using those sticky toes. Toads, they don't have really long legs or super sticky toes, so they're not known for climbing or jumping. Some toads can excrete poison from a membrane behind their eyes. So if this was a toad, it would be right back here. And that's where a poison can be secreted. And if an animal picks up that toad in its mouth, one, it's going to taste really bad, so they might spit it out then. And if they don't and they still eat it, it can make that animal sick. If you were to get that on your fingers, rub your eyes, or get your fingers in your mouth, it tastes bad or it could irritate your eyes. And for some smaller animals, it'd give it a really bad stomach ache and make it sick for a while. So things might not want to eat a toad anymore. Another large group within the classification of amphibians are again the salamanders. And this is an image of a salamander called a siren. This salamander lives pretty much its entire life underwater. And you can see that this salamander has gills on the outside of its body, whereas a land salamander might have lungs inside like we do to breathe air. Uh, but a really cool adaptation that salamanders have that people are studying is called regeneration. And what regeneration it means is if this salamander loses part of its tail or one of its limbs or toes, it can grow them back, which is really neat. Humans can't do that, right? If we accidentally lost a finger, it doesn't grow back. So scientists study these guys to try to figure out how they do that and maybe apply it to human medicine. All right, so those are some really cool adaptations of some of the amphibians that we know about in that classification. But one that they all share is something called semi-permeable skin. You have skin on your body and that skin is a barrier that protects you from the outside world. It protects you from viruses, diseases, anything that might get into your body and harm you. That's why we wanna make sure we clean it. Anytime we get cut or scrape, we clean it, we wrap it, make sure it's not getting bacteria in there. Amphibians have much different skin. Being semi-permeable means that some things can get into your skin while some things can't. So if they're living in the water, that water can pass in and out of their skin. And sometimes things that are in the water, if they're small enough, can also go into their skin. So let's do an experiment. Here I have a cup that has a coffee filter. So a coffee filter is a lot like semi-permeable skin because small things can get through, like the water that's got the coffee grounds in it, but the grounds themselves can't get through. On this cup, I have three layers of a pretty thick paper towel because humans have three pretty thick layers of skin and that is our barrier. This is an amphibian's barrier and we're gonna test our water here and see what goes through. So let's pour some water on the amphibian skin and see what happens. Pour some water with food coloring on the human-like skin. So you know that if you're in a bath or a pool or something for a long time, you might prune up you might get some moisture that gets into your skin, right? Look at all of that moisture that got into the amphibian skin. Now let's look at the human. 
There's nothing, maybe one drop inside the glass. Okay, this is wet, but it did a really good job of keeping that liquid out. Now let's look at solids. Let's say in our pond there are some broken down leaves or things like that. So if that's in our water, we've got some large items. Is that going to get through our semi-permeable skin? No. That is too big to go through the amphibian skin. Also too big and going to fall right off of the human skin. But what about something really small like a sunscreen or a bug spray that might mix into the water? It could go through the skin of the amphibian just like the water does. Maybe not into a human skin, but it could break through that semi-permeable layer of skin and go into those bodies. So do you think it's very healthy for an amphibian to be absorbing things like sunscreens, lotions, bug sprays? It's not. So we have to be very careful and cautious about what we put on our bodies, what chemicals we use in our homes that are eventually going to get into our water supply and could harm animals that live there like amphibians. So choose things like green cleaners that could be vinegar, lemon, or great cleaners, baking soda. All of those things are natural, don't harm the environment and the amounts that we're going to be using them as cleaners. And they're much safer in our home for our pets, our family, and for our environment. I want to thank you for joining me for another Ed Talk, and we'll see you again real soon. Mm -hmm.